Male role models for men are disappearing. Okay, make no mistake about it. The kids of today, there is a reason why these kids are so pussified, so wussified, so weak, so spineless, so beta, so cucked. There's a reason why these kids act more feminine than they do masculine, right? They listen to girly music, they drive girly cars, they don't lift, right? They don't do things that are masculine, right? And a lot of it's not because they don't want to, it's because they've been trained not to. They've been shamed not to, right? They've been told, hey, it's too toxic, mister. That's, that's toxic masculinity. If you try to talk to a girl you don't know, that's toxic. Okay, you get permission from her first, right? These kids are so pussified. And if you look back to their upbringing, you can see a big reason for this is because they really didn't have any male role models to look up to, right? A lot of these kids today are growing up in single mother households without a father. It's the worst thing for a child. Okay, if you don't believe me, watch my coaching video on the scary statistics of single mothers kids, like what happens to these kids. I mean, I blatantly dedicated that entire video to pointing out the actual statistics from the US Census Bureau of what happens to these children that come from fatherless homes. Okay, and I'm not gonna get into it in tonight's coaching video in this one, right? If you wanna watch it, watch that coaching video. But the purpose of tonight's video is to expose the fact that the reason why a lot of these kids don't act like men anymore, are afraid to be men, is because they didn't have male role models to look up to, okay? Especially a father, right? Especially a father, every kid needs a dad. And I'm not talking about a stepdad, I'm talking about a dad dad. And not a dad that, you know, like he only sees on the weekends because the parents are separated. No, the dad has to live in the house, okay? The dad has to live in the house. And this was also another statistic that I pointed out in that coaching video, the scary statistics of single mothers, right? The, what happens to their kids. It was blatantly made clear by the US Census Bureau that the father needs to be in the home. And not outside of the home, but in the actual home, right? But uh, every kid needs a male role model beyond even just his father, right? Beyond his father, because we all grew up with people we admired, like guys we admired, especially on the big screen, maybe even sports athletes, right? And these male role models are disappearing, right? They're being taken away from us. Even the ones that we have on YouTube are being taken away from us, right? If you see like a male role model that guys are starting to look, to, look up to, what happens? That guy gets deplatformed, right? His videos get demonetized. And I've seen a few guys that I followed on YouTube that I used to watch, you know, their, their stuff get demonetized, right? These are guys in more of like the political at atmosphere, but uh, they got attacked, they got demonetized. And it's like, why? You know, why is this happening? You know, and it's furthering the agenda of the weakening of men. You know, I would not be surprised if one day it happens to me, right? I would not be surprised. This is why I tell you guys, get on my email list, sign up for my programs, because this is the only way you can maintain contact with me. Okay, because all these platforms work in cahoots with each other, right? It's like when one decides to deplatform you, all the others will fall in line. It'll be like a domino effect, okay? That's the time we're living in right now. These are the times we're living in. But make no mistake about it, man, kids, are growing up, especially young boys today, they're not having those same male role models to look up to that previous generations did, right? If I go back to my dad's generation, for example, when my dad was growing up, he would tell me the guys that he admired were like James Dean, right? My dad was a big James Dean fan. He got me onto James Dean, uh, shared a lot of movie, uh, James Dean's movies with me when I was growing up. Uh, he was also a big admirer of Elvis Presley, Right, my dad was a huge Elvis fan, and so much so that that was actually my first concert that I ever went to in my entire life. I was obviously a child, right? I was just a few years old, but my dad took like me, my mother, and my brother and sisters to see Elvis in concert, 
at the Cow Palace in San Francisco. And it was actually one of his last concerts before uh, he passed away. But James Dean, Elvis Presley, Cary Grant, these were some of my dad's heroes that he looked up to, right? He was like, wow, these guys are friggin' alpha. They're men. They know how to be men. And they don't filter themselves. They're not afraid to be who they are, right? And then when I was growing up in the 80s, you guys are part of my generation, Generation X. You remember back then, we had guys like Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sylvester Stallone, right? The Rocky series. I'm a huge fan of Rocky IV. Even to this day, I can still watch Rocky IV over and over. That's probably my favorite Rocky of all time. I'm not a fan of the new Rockies. I'm not a fan of the Rockies that happened after that just because I almost feel like he took the character in a completely different direction that I did not see Rocky going in. I did not see Rocky like failing in life. And, you know, basically it's like he's, you know, like the new Rocky series lately is like this victim mentality Rocky. He's always sick and he's, you know, I understand he's older, but he didn't need to turn his character into this like, you know, helpless victim. You know what I mean? I don't know why he went in that direction because if you see the real Stallone in Hollywood, I mean, he's a pretty alpha dude. It's like, why did you take your character in that direction? You know what I mean? It's like, I did not see Rocky going in that direction. Anyway, Rocky IV was one of my favorites. You guys who grew up with that. Uh, also, back then, I remember uh, one of my all-time favorites also was Over the Top. You guys remember Over the Top with Stallone? Cobra? Who could forget Cobra? Right, you guys who uh, have not watched these movies, get the DVD and watch these movies. Cobra, over the top, great father and son movie, by the way. If you're a father and you have a son, you guys need to watch over the top together. Right, and of course we had Arnold Schwarzenegger, Commando. I've recommended the movie Commando a number of times. I'm like, hey, if you want a quick testosterone boost, watch Commando a few times, like back to back. Right, I think Commando set the record for the most amount of kills in a single movie. But uh, we had these guys as our role models, right? We had Schwarzenegger, Stallone, we had Van Damme, right? Van Damme came around the late 80s. We had Steven Seagal, right? He's more or less also the late 80s, early 90s. These were guys that we had growing up to look up to like, oh, wow, this is what we should kind of aspire to be, like this badass right? A strong man, right? If you look at just these four guys alone, right? And just these movies by itself, they were very alpha. These movies were alpha, right? Yeah, sure. They were able to throw in some comedy into these movies, but it wasn't over the top, like goofball comedy like we have today where they're just making fun of like, oh, being a man is stupid. It's stupid. You know, I'm Jonas Hill, you know, whatever, whoever the latest actors are. I don't know, right? Because I don't watch TV anymore. I stopped watching TV. I lost interest in it. I told you guys, after the year 2000, I very quickly began to lose interest in movies. I can count on one hand the movies I saw in the theaters after the year 2000. I just started to lose interest, right? I just started to lose interest because there were no more of those strong male role models that I saw on the big screen. It was more or less like these goofy comedic actors making fun of being a man. And these were supposed to be men themselves. And I'm like, I just, this doesn't interest me. I don't care to see it. Watching these like new comedic, kind of like slapstick goofball actors in movies after the year 2000, I just lost interest. I lost interest really fast. I was like, this is nothing that I want to aspire to be like. I don't want to be like these jackasses, these morons, these idiots on the big screen. I'm like, my heroes are gone. Right? They're not doing these type of movies anymore. Right? I just lost interest. I'm like, and it's sad because, you know, these are the type of actors that this new generation of uh, young boys have grown up with. And then you wonder why they're so retarded, right? Why they're such pussies. Why they don't know how to act like men. Why they will come on a channel like mine, for example, and hate on a lot of what I'm teaching. Right? Because they don't want to live up to that responsibility of being a man. Right? They identify more with their feminine side than they do their masculine because they've been taught to do that. They've been indoctrinated to do that. Right? But they don't have these male role models to look up to anymore. Like I said, most of these actors after the year 2000, very like 
Like these comedians, just goofball, you know, acting like mo complete morons on the big screen, idiots. Yeah, sometimes it's funny, but a lot of times it's not. Right? If you really think about it, it's like, why are you acting like such a pussy on the big screen? Even a lot of the superhero movies nowadays, like these actors, I mean, at least back in the day with like Schwarzenegger and Stallone, these guys would actually physically prepare for their movies. They would lift weights, they would get in phenomenal shape to take on that role. And then they would do a lot of the action scenes themselves, right? Even with Van Damme and Seagull, right? They would do a lot of the action scenes themselves, a lot of the fighting. There was no CGI, right? There was no like bullshit, like animation, 3D animation, right? A lot of these superhero movies nowadays, like these actors, the, the costumes are like foam padded with muscles. So they're not even physically preparing for the movie, right? Because the costume just comes that way and then they just CGI everything. It's so fake, it's so inauthentic. And this is why it disgusts me. I'm like, how can you possibly watch something like that knowing like how much, how bullshit it is? I mean, the actor is not even preparing for the role, right? But these are the guys that, you know, these kids are looking up to today. They don't really have those same male role models that we had growing up or that our dads had or our grandfathers for that example. And this is why you see this generation of young boys that are becoming men are so pussified, you know, and credit to the ones that are, are part of this generation that are finding content like this, that are seeking it out because in their gut, they know something's wrong, right? Their soul, it's like their soul is telling them something's wrong. I don't like this. I don't feel good. I want answers and I'm not getting it from the mainstream. I'm not getting it from the social narrative. I need to go seek the answers out for myself. Then they get on YouTube and then they find mentors. Right? And really, we become the new male role models for these, these young boys, for men. Right? Because you can't find them anywhere else. Before, we used to look at Hollywood. We used to look at sports, right? Even sports, even. I remember growing up, you guys know I'm a huge Cowboys fan, right? I grew up watching Roger Staubach, right? I was a huge Roger Staubach fan. He was a quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. And then obviously, we got Aikman. Right? I also like Danny White too. Danny White did a great job. Um, but Aikman came along. So we had a lot of like, great male role models to look up to. But even in sports nowadays, you know, and I'm still a Cowboys fan, obviously. I'm going to go to a game this, uh, this season up in Dallas. But I mean, if you look what feminism has done to sports, I mean, these guys are now like wearing pink. There's pink on the field. There's like a pink football. I'm like, what is this doing? in my sport, right? Why am I watching this? I mean, and it got to the point where, I mean, even with sports, I could barely watch anymore. I watch like the important games every once in a while, like if it's a playoff game or championship game, but if it's a regular season game, it's really hard to keep me like glued to the screen like I used to be. I used to like just watch the entire game from front to back. I look forward to it all week. Now it's just kind of like, eh, you know, cause I don't want to see that shit. I, <laughs> You know, I understand like breast cancer awareness and all that, but everything has, there's a time and place for everything. And it's not on Sunday on the football field, especially a man sport, right? Save the politics for another time, right? But even with sports, it's hard to find male role models there too, because society is trying to pussify them. I know I get a lot of guys talking about uh, like Bond, oh, James Bond, you know, and Daniel Craig. I mentioned Daniel, Daniel Craig, right? He played one of the most alpha roles of the Bond series, right? In Casino Royale. Yet, what does this guy do once he's done with the role? He turns around, does a PSA, wearing a dress, wearing makeup, wearing a skirt, acting like a woman. It's like, why are you doing this, dude? Why are you doing this? All right, these are things that would never happen before. You know, and a lot of you might be like, it's progressive, it's progressive. It's like, no, it's not progressive, it's sick. It's sick and you have to realize when you are being desensitized to propaganda and that's what that dude was pushing, was propaganda. So I stopped watching Bond films, I stopped watching it and now there's gonna be like a female James Bond, give me a break, I'll laugh my ass off if any of you jackasses like pay for that ticket to go watch a female James Bond. Mm -mm. If you support that, 
Nuh uh. But, like I was saying, uh, most of the young boys in today's generation just don't have those male role models to look up to. And the only place they're really finding them is on YouTube. Okay? As I've said before, you want to find mentors and you want to fire your teachers. I've said this in a number of coaching videos, right? Because really, in today's technological climate, um, mentors are the new role models for men, for young boys. And it's just up to you to choose the right mentors for you. Okay, nobody's looking at Hollywood anymore for male role models. There aren't any, right? There aren't any more in Hollywood, at least that I know of. Because some of you guys might be, oh, this actor, that, that, he played a really alpha role here, I'm this guy. And then, sure enough, you Google that actor and you see he's done PSAs himself like supporting the gynocracy, supporting feminism. So, you know, don't send me these actors that just played because they played an alpha role in a movie, but then in their real life, here they are, like cheerleading for the gynocracy. Don't send me those guys, because those guys are part of the problem. But if you're a young guy growing up today, um, you're not gonna find any male role models in Hollywood. You might find a few in sports, but for the most part, you're gonna find them on YouTube. Right? And at least on YouTube, even though it's heavily censored, right? it's heavily censored by the people uh, at the top, um, you could still see for yourself, just like look at a person's subscriber base, you could look at the amount of likes on their uh, videos to the amount of dislikes, right? because generally if it's like a leftist video, it'll have an overwhelming amount of uh, dislikes to a very tiny amount of likes. I mean, you could see for yourself who you should listen to, who everyone else is following, who people are actually learning from, who people are talking about. And obviously everyone, you know, especially if it's a successful guy, they're gonna get haters, right? You're gonna have a lot of these little negative, little toxic worms who are trying to piggyback on their traffic to build their own channel. I have a few myself, right? But obviously, you wanna vet your mentors for yourself and decide who you should listen to, who is going to help you the most, who is going to get you to the place you want to end up in life the fastest, right? So you might want to find yourself a financial mentor. You could find that on YouTube. A real estate mentor, you could find that on YouTube. A dating mentor, you could find that on YouTube, right? A male self-development mentor, you could find that on YouTube, as well as many others, right? You don't need to follow these like comedic jackasses on the big screen that are acting like complete pussies and you know totally kowtowing to women and thinking that that's you know what an ideal man should be like it's not hollywood is selling you nothing but propaganda okay period you're not going to find any more male role models there and you're not going to find them in music either right like i was mentioning my dad had elvis presley to, to look up to i had guys like billy idol right i was a huge billy idol fan back then back in the day um you don't have guys like that you know, who does the generation now have? Like, you know, Justin Bieber, right? I have nothing against Justin Bieber, right? But I'm just saying, but you know, you see the progression. So if you have sons, if you have young boys in your family, or if you're a young man yourself watching this, you can no longer look to Hollywood, the music industry, even the sports industry to find role models. Okay, most of the strong male role models you're fi you'll find are going to be mentors. They're going to come in the form of mentors. Okay. And you're going to find those mentors on YouTube. Okay. That's the fastest, easiest place to find them on YouTube. Right? Because they have disappeared from society. You don't see them. You just don't see strong male role models anywhere anymore. You know, I'm sure they're out there, but Hollywood is you know, and society at large, the mainstream narrative, they're not going to give these guys a platform. They're not going to publicize these guys. So you're never going to hear about them. Okay. And this is why I mentioned YouTube, because it's a place where, you know, if you have valuable content, you could rise to the top. So you'll see for yourself, it's a meritocracy. I mean, for the most part, YouTube is a meritocracy outside of having a lot of our voices suppressed, right? It still is a meritocracy because you can see for yourself, like who has the largest subscriber bases and who has, um, who's putting out like high value content. Cause you could look at the like to dislike ratio. 
you could look at the growth of somebody's channel and you can decide for yourself, like, is this something that's going to help me? And if it is, then hey, yeah, subscribe. Follow that guy, listen to that guy, take his advice, you know? And I take my own advice when it comes to that. I mentioned on a number of occasions, I'm uh, getting deeper into real estate investing, stock investing. And I mean, I'm pretty good at it. I've done well for myself, but obviously I'm looking for more high value dudes to connect with. And I mentioned on a number of occasions, uh, the only YouTube channels that I follow right now are like Graham Stephan and uh, Jeremy, Financial Education. These are the two YouTube channels that I'm learning a ton from. And uh, at some point, probably hire one of these guys and do some business, but you wanna do the same, right? You wanna do the same. And the thing about finding a, a male mentor is you have to be willing to push your ego aside, okay? So if you are all about yourself, and you, you think you know everything, you're never gonna succeed. I mean, no guy knows everything. I mean, I've done really well for myself. I'm pretty successful, right? But I still push my ego aside to learn from other guys who I know are doing better in a sp specific category of their lives, right? Like these guys I just mentioned, they're doing great with real estate or stock investing and hey, I have no problem pushing my own, own ego aside even though I've done well, even though I've done well. I have no problem pushing my own ego aside to learn from them. Just as if they wanted to learn dating advice, hey, they would need to push their egos aside to learn from me, right? But you know, some guys out there, they, they wanna think they know it all. Like, oh, I already know that, I don't need to learn this. You know, and it's like, okay, what are your results? How many beautiful women are you dating, all right? What kind of car do you drive? What kind of house do you live in? You know everything, you're successful, that's what you're saying. How many books have you read? Right? How much do you donate to charity each month? Right? Since you know it all. There's so many guys out there, not a whole lot, but there are a good number of guys out there, just they're not willing to push their egos aside to learn from another man. They feel like they know everything, I know everything. Right? And you can't, okay? Because you don't know everything. You can always learn, you can always get better. Right? So I'm gonna wrap up tonight's coaching video here. Until next time, this is Matt Cross from Alpha Male Secrets. Don't forget to smash that like button below. Also hit that notification bell right next to it so that you are notified whenever I release a brand new coaching video here on YouTube. More importantly guys, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Too many of you guys are still not yet subscribed to my channel, which means you're not getting notified whenever I upload a brand new coaching video to YouTube. So make sure you subscribe to my channel as well. That way whenever I upload a brand new video to YouTube, you won't have to search for it, right? Or wait weeks to find it. Instead, you'll get it fresh as I upload it, okay? So make sure you subscribe to my channel as well. And for you guys who want to support my work and all of this red pill content that I'm teaching guys here on my channel, the best way to do that is by becoming a premium subscriber of my premium Alpha Male Secrets channel, which I am hosting on a private platform away from YouTube. And the reason why I'm doing that is to protect my content, to protect my premium content from being demonetized or being deplatformed, okay? So if you want to access my premium content, which again, I'm hosting on a private platform away from YouTube, it's just one buck, okay? It's just $1 for the entire first month of premium content from me and it's real easy to sign up. All you need to do is just click that link below in my description box. It will take you over to my website where you could get signed up right now. It just takes two seconds. So do that now and I will see you in my next coaching video. All right, have you guys seen the Trans Am back here? Okay, I think I've mentioned this before but uh, if you see the logo, it's the same thing on my phone, right? That I've shown on my phone because I had a number of guys going, why are you flashing that Illuminati symbol of the rising phoenix? And it's like, no, it's from a Trans Am. It's a 77 Pontiac Trans Am, right? You guys know I'm a huge gearhead. I grew up with muscle cars. Used to buy them all the time, fix them, sell them, right? 77 Trans Am, that's where that logo comes from. It doesn't come from the Illuminati. What are you talking about? <laughs>